letter you asked me to describe life here there's so much to write about yet such little time where do i begin do you remember when i first told you that i wanted to join the seminary you were worried you were losing a son i'm happy that with time you have seen that my calling is a gift from god started my journey at Molo. The first month is just going to Shamba, tilling the land. The next step was St. Augustine Mabanga, where we do our philosophicum. Here at St. Thomas Aquinas, I love the place because uh, it's the world of theology now. We are no longer in abstract, we are talking about reality. The first few days were brutal. The culture shock, new people, so many rules, homesickness, and I kept wanting to call, to hear you and my little sister's voice, something familiar, but I couldn't. During the spiritual year, we are not allowed to use phones as much. It is a time of reflection, silence, and prayer. I have been born and raised in a place called Maina. This place has commonly been known as ghetto, or in other words, slums. And from all this is where I can trace the heart and the soul of my vocation. It is service to those people who are in the peripheries of life. <laughs> the academics, I love them because they sharpen me, they sharpen everybody. I'm also a very good winger and also a very, 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 very good basketballer. Being the only son from a family of many girls is not easy. I won't have that joy of being called a dad, or I won't have that joy of naming my dad or my mom. I won't have that joy of being part of being called uh, Mpoa, I'm verified. But uh, considering uh, that I'll be called father by many, not just one or two or three, I'll be called by many. Our days begin when the sun rises. That was so hard at first. It uh, commences with adoration, louds, mass, and then we proceed to spend the day in a blend of study, prayer, manual work, games, and uh, community interactions. Here I was thinking I was coming to the seminary to learn the scripture and the mass. Shock on me. But the beauty of it is, I have found a family here. Our oldest seminary in the country is St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary, which was built in the early 60s. It was well built, but the buildings are normal progress with time, begin to age, they require touch up here and there. Sometimes they require renovation that is very expensive and very substantial. Our journey has not been without its trials. The seminaries are in dire need of renovation. We still use firewood to cook in this day and age. Something really that would touch me if changed is the condition of our rooms are leaking. So you see people developing cold now and then, and others even develop chest problems. Some of the buildings we have today 
are completely going to be condemned. They can no longer be used for educational purposes in our country, in our institutions. We need to build new seminaries all together. We are straining. In a given year, up to 200 people who want to join the seminary. St. Mary's Molo has a capacity of 75. So we are forced then either to turn people away or to look for alternative situations. Many students come, line up at the entrance there. They want to join the seminary, but they're turned back. And these are the same youth you want to keep away from trouble, but they're turned away. So we need each one of us to go deep and look into our souls and say, well, how can I support the church to train more seminarians who will then later become ordained as priests? We don't want a diocese to find itself in a situation whereby it tells seminarians, we can't admit you this year, wait a bit, and the resources are available. It involves just the books. You buy the, you buy the books, the materials, the tuition, you have the tuition part. You have to check us on this. And also the formators, they get something from there. Those ones who are teaching them, those ones who are forming them, they still need their pocket money. We hear whispers of change. A seminary's endowment fund is in the pipeline. Fingers crossed that it pours blessings upon us, especially with the looming of oncoming rains, just threatening our daily cold water shower routine and leaky roofs. But we keep our focus on the journey, for we know our calling is bigger than us. What inspired the creation of the Seminaries and Endowment Fund are many two reasons. The first is that the church in Kenya depended largely on external funding to be able to run the seminaries. And the second reason is that with the depletion of this external support, we've had need to be able to raise money locally in order to be able to run our fairs, renovate the seminaries. 70% tuition fees for seminarians used to come from outside, through the office of the Holy Father. Today, it's going to be below 30%, and it's going to go to a point whereby it will stop. Kingdom Bank believes in financial support. It is in line with this that we have been supporting the church, Catholic Church for that matter, and the work that it does to support the communities around where it works. My advice to all those other people, not only the Catholic faithful, is to come out and support this exercise so that our country can be endowed religiously. Religion is also a very key backbone in terms of growth of the socio-economic development of our country. This fund will ultimately benefit the society in which we live in, but the immediate beneficiary will be the seminaries in Kenya. The best way to solve the challenges that we face is when we come together. But we also try to do it in a fun way. So it's not just asking, asking, asking. We would like to make it fun in that when you contribute, you also enjoy yourself. That's why we organize things like golf tournaments, but at the same time contribute towards a worthy cause. To invest in the seminary is to invest for the country, is to invest for the future, is to invest for the world. Participation in the endowment fund is really an act of love. An act of love, love for the church, an act of love for society, because a healthy, growing church is always a good influence to society. Mom, I'll end here for now, and uh, I hope to hear from you soon. Please know that your sacrifices are not in vain. I bless you. I would wish that you stand by me, because as Ben King says, when the night is dark and the land is dark and the only light that we can have is from the moon, I will not be afraid because I know you will stand by me. This is only possible if you stand by us. Stand by us. Where there is love, you do not count the cost. Those who stand by me, help me do this. When the night has come and the land is dark And the moon is the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid Oh, I won't be afraid To 
just as long 